What's good everybody, this your boy Warren, better known as Just Fresh or Nero Ditsua, depending on where you know me from. Now, with me today I have my sister, Anjanique Gumman, hey. LPC ooh, ooh. of the Inner Mind. That stands for Licensed Professional Counselor, for those of you that don't know, now you know. We're here to talk to you today because this month is National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. So, since I have a professional here with me today, instead of hearing me ramble on about things that I may not be knowledgeable about, you I brought a know. professional with me. Right. So, tell them a little bit about yourself. Alright, so, um, like my brother G said, that I am a licensed professional counselor, basically a licensed mental health therapist, like most people like to say. Um, I work with stress, anxiety, mood, behavior, all of that stuff, children, teenagers, young adults, millennials, hey y'all. Um, but I like to talk a lot about like self-care, mindfulness, you know, things like that. Those are like my specialties, what I really like to focus on. Okay. So for those of y'all that don't know, I'll be sure to put her information in YouTube comments below or on Facebook up above. That way y'all can go and check out her page and see all the stuff that she's been doing. She held a workshop for uh, young ladies, uh, teens and preteens about uh, two weeks ago. And it was a really great turnout. I got to take pictures there and it was just, they loved it, they had fun, Chick-fil-A. And you know, you can always have a good time with Chick-fil-A, but then you get to talk about self-care and everything with the uh, surrounding mental health that sometimes are taboo topics for right. young people and especially from you know people within our culture. Right. So we, we wanna make this the norm and we want to come and talk to y'all today about that. Mm -hmm. So with this being National Suicide Prevention Month, one of the things that we usually see go around all the time is people always saying, check on your strong friend, your strong friend this, your strong friend that. And a lot of times, me being one of those people that's the strong friend, a lot of times we tend to hold a lot in and we don't really, we're not really vocal with others about uh, those things. And so I tend to not really outwardly tell people what's going on with me. Mm -hmm. So you as a professional, as somebody that's within that field and has the knowledge and expertise to handle something like that, how would you tell someone to approach their strong friend and, right. and what are some tips and things that they could use when talking with their friend? Right. So, I mean, I think that's a very good topic, especially during this month, like you highlighted, National Suicide Awareness Month. So one thing I do want to throw out, because I think like, Talking about suicide is so taboo, but it's so important because I was just looking at the statistics for the um, CDC website, uh, and it was saying that in 2016, and I'm sure the numbers are pretty pretty much about the same, but from ages to 10 up until age 34, suicide is the second leading cause of death. Wow. Second leading cause of death. So it's important we talk about it and not shy away from it. We see it so much in the media of celebrities committing suicide because of depression, things like that. And I think that's what brought on the topic of, okay, hashtag check on your strong friend. So I'm so glad that we get a chance to actually talk about it today. I think, and I think with that is very important because a lot of times we'll look at things when we say, you know, with it, with it being National Suicide, uh, Prevention Month, mm -hmm. a lot of times, uh, some things aren't rule suicides, whether it be, whether it be a drug overdose or right. from alcohol, things of that nature, right. which could fall within that realm, but it's, it's classified different because of uh, the manner in which the death was caused. Mm -hmm. So um, when you have a friend who may indulge in drugs to self-medicate or self-cope right. with the things that they're going through, these, you know, these tips and tricks that she, you know, that she'll give us would be able to help us kind of approach those friends in a different manner because right. I know I don't like being preached to and told what to do. So the manner in which somebody approaches me is very important and right. how I'm uh, receptive to that information. Right. So, okay, two things I want to say for that. So I think we can break it up because when it comes to that, it's a two-way street. Okay. It comes from both the strong friend and their friend. So we'll first speak on the perspective of the friends of that strong friend. Okay. So I feel like the number one thing is be mindful of the behaviors, the moves, basically any changes that you notice in your friend. So if your friend used to go out and party or used to be social or used to be on social media and then you see like a decrease in those activities, okay. that that's a red flag. That's a major red flag to be like, okay, what's going on with that person? 
so you see like isolation on top of that you might see um maybe the person um is more negative I, mm. I call them. sometimes you might think okay they're being negative negative nancy and then at that point a lot of times we're like you know what i'm gonna just cut that person off you're toxic to me and it's okay to have those boundaries but then at the end of the day you have to sit back and ask yourself this person was not like that at first mm-hmm. like what's going on so it's like if they're being negative check on your friend you know you know yeah. just ask them what's going on you wasn't like that at first like let's sit down and talk I do tend, now that you say that, mm-hmm. I do tend to complain more when I'm yes. battling with, uh, as, as many people don't know, I do suffer from depression and I'm also bipolar. So when I am in a mania, um, I do sometimes tend to become a lot more negative. I complain a lot. And especially when I was working for the state, whenever I was, um, I dealt with depression really tough when I was working for the state and nothing made me happy. I was always mad about everything. So I, that is definitely something that you say that, that I that I am noticing about right. the change in my personality because I'm usually really upbeat and yeah. chipper. And then when I'm, you know, in that, in that zone of depression is everything is saying, this ain't gonna work. I'm right. tired of this, I'm, I'm over this. And mm-hmm. it's just, I'm, I'm very mean. Yeah. So. Cause you quick to cut it off and be like, you know what? I ain't gotta take this. I'm already dealing with it a lot. I'm already stressing. You know what? It ain't. Keep it moving. But it's like on top of that. So it's, it's interesting you mention that. But on top of that, we also have to recognize anger okay. and irritability. Mm-hmm. So typically in a in a black community mm-hmm. or in minority communities, but the way we see that emotions are expressed is through a lot of times aggression and anger. Okay. But what we don't realize is those are secondary emotions okay. to hurt, stress, depression. <laughs> but so you might see somebody, um, Lil Pookie punching holes in the wall, but you're not asking Lil Pookie what's going on. You just be like, Oh, he got anger issues. Uh-huh. No, nah, don't talk to him. But it's like Dude is really feeling stressed out, yeah. but nobody wants to sit and talk to him. Y'all just want to cancel him out, but you're not Don't say realizing. He need his ass whooped. Right, right, so, or that. Yeah. But it's like you canceling him out is furthering that depression, furthering those thoughts of, man, nobody loves me. Don't nobody care. Everybody thinks, you know, I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. That word I hate so much. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, it was at a video not too long ago of a little girl mm-hmm. at a daycare, and she was like, throwing everything on the floor yeah, she was ripping the shells down mm-hmm. and she was doing all this and doing all that and, and the first thought in my head which is my old thinking which was man she need to get her ass whooped right. that was my whole first train of thought right. and then i after i sat back and thought about it i was like i got whoopings as a kid mm-hmm. i was still bad so are whoopings really the solution i understand discipline within that manner because i grew up in a household where that happened and i understand why it happens yeah. but sh- what she's speaking more to is the aspect of, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, is trying to understand what the behavior is being it's triggered it. and stemming from. Right. That way, when you do try to correct it, you're not just whooping them because you're mad, but you're whooping them because you want to try to correct the behavior. So you want to be able to speak to the problem before you just go and decide, okay, I'm going to get physical with the issue first. Mm-hmm. And it's it's funny because I've we you know me and my friends we all have different mindset some of them have kids some of them don't and um even with me and my brother it was like we had this thing he was like well you grew up getting whoopings you talking about you don't believe in whooping kids now and i'm just like i was a kid that got whoopings i just i just happened to turn out good by the grace of god my mama was a great parent but i was just a bad kid i would like to talk back to the teachers i'll talk back to my mama i did some foolish things as a teenager I did too. and okay. you know and sometimes Sometimes it takes like a little bump on the head for you to get right. I've had friends that have gotten plenty of bumps on the head and they still ain't right. They still, you know, continue down certain paths. So physical, uh, physical discipline isn't always the answer. And sometimes, uh, try, like you said, reaching deeper within to try to figure out what's going on with them can really help to understand right. what's going on in somebody's head. Right, right. So now the whole aspect of checking on the strong friend when it comes to somebody, like I said, somebody approaching me, mm-hmm. 
I don't want somebody to really be like, man, you should do this or you should do that, yeah. and and this is how you need to be doing this. And like, I don't like, cause I'm a fixer myself, and I have a bad habit of doing that. Yeah. Instead of like listening, I, I'm already working on a solution in my head to fix whatever your problem yeah. is, versus just listening to you, letting you get it out. Mm -hmm. So, what are some good techniques as far as listening, and then? being able to give advice to someone that may be struggling with that, that may not want to reach out to a professional for help at that yeah. time. No, so what I would say is for sure in that type of situation is number one, like you said, like listening, practice active listening. Okay. A lot of times we listen to think of a solution mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily what that person needs. And a lot of times what might work for you is not going to work for me. We're individual people, mm -hmm. so I'm going to respect that. Mm -hmm. But so let's listen, but listen with empathy. Don't just be listening and be like, oh man, you'll get over it or, you know, stop crying. I, I, that, I hate when people, you know, say yeah. that. But, you know, oh, you'll get over it. Stop being stressed. It's like, dog, Somebody's how you Somebody's going tell through me? something worse than you. Right. Oh, that too. We but it's like, it, dog, yeah. how you going to tell me to stop being stressed? Like, you telling me <laughs> to stop being stressed is going to make me more stressed. Because now I'm stressed, and then I'm frustrated with you. Yeah. Which doesn't I, help. I don't think a lot of people understand that when, like, um, people say things like that, like stop stressing. Like it's just, oh, like I just woke up this morning yeah. and decided to I, be I'll depressed, or I decided to have anxiety. Like, um, you, you, it, these things, like literally, you can be in the middle of doing anything. I've literally been in the middle of driving, and like a wave of depression or anxiety will hit you. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to explain it to my wife before, and it, she she understands. It's like one of those things. It's just like this heightened sense of like paranoia, and and like f like like my, my hands are shaking my body is shaking and I just feel like I'm going crazy but nothing's wrong nothing's going on you're just literally sitting here but in your mind you can't tell your mind that nothing's going on nothing's wrong that you're not in, in, in imminent danger but for some reason your mind thinks everything's going crazy right now yeah. And so, like she said, someone telling, like, I've had somebody tell me before, like, man, what you're going through ain't nothing. It's people who are going through worse. Mm -hmm. I'm At the time that you're going through something, you're not Googling who has worse problems right. than me. That's that's you not the way we... To hear that. Yeah, we're trying to hear it. I, I really want this to stop. I just want it to go away. Whatever right. the issue is, I want it to go away because at the same time, while you are dealing with some real issues, your mind not working in a manner in which you want it to right. can make things much worse. And... As I get older, I tend to, like, and Quita will catch this all the time, which is my wife. Mm -hmm. She'll catch this from time. I get frustrated very easily, especially when um, I'm not feeling 100%. Mm -hmm. and, so, and, and things like yeah, simple yeah. things will yeah, tend to, like, frustrate me. And I'll just snap. I'll be sitting at the computer and I'm editing a picture. And for some reason, Photoshop is moving slow and I just lose it. But that goes back to the irritability that yeah. we talked about. And I never noticed that until she highlighted it. I just thought that... I thought that was everybody, but like literally, like I like like I one day I hit my hand on the desk to the point where I like I swap my, my my fingers swell up, mm -hmm. but I it was just because I was so frustrated and I don't know why I was so mad. I was like the computer moves slow every time I get on it, mm -hmm. but it just that day I was just frustrated and dealing with that and it was too much for me, mm -hmm. and I just blew up about it. So you know you say. Speaking with somebody in a manner and 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 listening to the active actively listening to them, with, it, empathy. It, with empathy can do a lot. I was right. a terrible listener. I'm, I'm a fixer, so when you start telling me a problem, I'm definitely trying to solve yeah, it from like, the. Yeah, let's strategize. Let's think of a plan yeah. of action. Yeah, like I ain't even let you finish. Really like, okay, right. look, right here, I already in my head. I stopped listening to you five minutes into this 15 minute conversation. Mm -hmm. I already had a solution picked out for right. you. This is tailor cut for you, and and usually it don't it don't really go that way because everybody. Is it like you say? Everybody isn't you. Everybody right. compartmentalizes information differently, Absolutely. and everybody handles and approaches situations differently than right. you. Right. So now, with 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 knowing that, what is some what is some advice that you would give someone, or something that you would um, have someone tell their friend that's going through those type of situations yeah. that they're dealing with? So what I would do in that moment is, you know how we say, pull up on your friend, check your friend if they're doing something wrong. Well, if you see something abnormal within your friend, pull up on them. Be like, hey, you know, you used to be, do these things or now you're doing something different. Like, what's what's going on? Mm -hmm. Let's talk. 
It may not be nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. That might just be me. Mm-hmm. But if that's the answer, it'd be like, oh, okay, cool. I was just checking on you yeah. because I was a little worried. I was a little concerned. Yeah. But then that lets the person know, you know, okay, they do care about me. Yeah. But if something is going on and they're telling you, active listening with empathy is the answer. And then after that, you kind of reflect on what they say, kind of empathize. Like, you know, I'm sure that's a lot for you. Yeah. How can I help you? And the reason why you ask, how can I help you? Because that goes back to what we say. Everybody's an individual. Mm -hmm. So you might like, um, you know, taking a nap or whatever. That don't work for me. I got two kids. So if you be (laughs) like, ah, just go take a nap. Houseway. Go for a walk. Right. Houseway. (laughs) So it's like, you know, stuff like that doesn't necessarily work. So you might just be like, yo, how can I help you in this moment? What are some things that I can do? Hmm. Or you can recommend have you have you looked into counseling? Have you looked into therapy? Mm-hmm. But normalize that. Don't make it seem like oh you're crazy. You need to go see a shrink, which people say. I've made that mistake before. Yeah. And, and and but it's okay. And tell us some, yeah, tell us somebody that man y'all crazy. Y'all need to go get help. Right. It's like automatically they got right. they got super offended. And I I was we were arguing. So when it came out, it didn't come out the right way. Mm-hmm. But just the whole aspect of saying it in the manner in which I said it was like an attack on their character and the person that they were. And so it's what's funny is that person that I told it to has actually sought help for that and they loved it. Cause I I went counseling changed my life. When I went through counseling, I it, you know, I was one of those people I was like, eh, what's the point? And I went and you right. start realizing I got some stuff that I got to unpack. I have some things that I had never really addressed or dealt with that I didn't realize not only was affecting my behavior, but affecting my marriage and affecting <laughs> my the way I viewed everything, period. Right. So sometimes sitting down with someone that is a licensed professional that understands how to talk to you and how to listen to you can really help you get through some things that you probably never, never really thought about and, and 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 understanding how they affect and trigger you that way going forward you know how to better approach those situations right. and that's something i never really thought about was asking somebody how can i help you i don't think i've ever asked anybody like I, and people always say i give good advice but i've never asked somebody how can i help you it was always okay here's the solution right. or here's what you should do never how can i help you so that's something now i kind of put within my advice repertoire now when I'm dealing with someone because right. that could be really helpful instead of just telling them, look, step one. Right. Go here, do this, and then take a right. left. Nah, so I, I definitely get it. Right, right. So now, we like we said, it is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And um, a friend of mine, uh, one of his things that he said, a goal that he set for himself was that he was going to make sure that he did like mental health check-ins with all his friends weekly. Yes. So, and this this is within a group chat and it was, you know, it's four of us and we were all just talking and we just started, it was weird because we usually joking in there, but we all started talking about some of the things that, you know, we were dealing with that day and it, and it spawned into some really great conversation. So, you know, just send a text to your friend today to say, I'm just checking on you. I just want to see how you're doing, mm-hmm. uh, where your head at is right, you know, right now. Is there anything that I can help you with? And, right. you know, and, and just make sure, you know, that that not just your strong friend, but your your, your family, mm-hmm. your your friends, cousins, uncles, all of them, whoever, your cat, dog, because cats and dogs get stressed too. People don't know this, <laughs> but they do get stressed out. Um, I learned this when Milo got stressed out and he bit me, but you know, uh, that's not, neither here nor there. But uh, <laughs> so, you know, make sure that, you know, you're checking on your people, make sure that you're checking on yourself. Self care sure is that, important. That, um, number one thing I tell my clients all the time, you might be that strong friend. I think everybody has strong point parts and weak parts at the same time. But you might be identified as that strong person mm-hmm. in the family. But at the end of the day, you have to um, take care of yourself first. Mm-hmm. So if I'm not healthy, if I'm not right within myself, I can't help other people. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times when I'm helping other people, I mean, I might like it, but that drains me. Yeah. Even as a licensed professional counselor, mm-hmm. I get drained. Sometimes I get headaches, and that's when I know, okay, my body is telling me something that's not right. Neek, you need to sit down and just chill for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So just checking in, being aware of yourself, any changes that you've noticed within your body. Because you know how we start we start saying, oh, you got my nerves bad. Oh, my <laughs> nerves bad. That's what we, we be saying, but it's like... That's your body telling you, okay, something is not right. Yeah. 
And we tend to ignore those right. red flags within ourselves. I, I, I'm a, um, I used to be a, a, a very big people pleaser and um, I would always put everybody else before myself. So that I definitely do understand is checking in with yourself and taking care of yourself because right. I, I thought I was the fixer of everybody else's issues and didn't know how to fix my own and couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Right. But I knew everybody else's issue was like the back of my hand. So it, definitely important to check in with yourself and and um and practice self care. Yeah. Do like taking a break, taking a step back and being like, you know what, hey y'all, I'm about to turn my phone off for like the next two hours to go see a movie or I'm about mm -hmm. to um go to the park. I'm about to do whatever makes me feel good. Honestly speaking, I like Ratchet T V. Monday nights, VH one, everybody know. Okay, I might take sneak at six PM, seven PM, but that's when, you know, Ratchet T V comes on. So she's probably not gonna respond and you're right, because that's my time yeah. to unwind and those things are okay because that works for me. Mm hmm So like we said, make sure you take care of yourself. Right. Look out for your people. And most of all, be happy. Right. Deuces! Toodles! Hey. <laughs>